pronounced Krasnogorsk. Pronounced Nikolai Mishilovitz Morenkovit. Okay, here we can see, starting from the left to the right, we have a uh, strap lug right here, which is always nice to see on a vintage camera. And then we immediately come to the mechanical self-timer. I'm going to remove the lens for this so that we can see the shutter when we activate the self-timer, which will be by moving this lever all the way down 180 degrees and trigger the self-timer. This is a button right here. We'll just push right in and we'll see the mirror go up and the shutter activate. The self timer takes about eight seconds. Okay, we'll let it complete its cycle. And then while the lens is off, I want to point out that this is a M39 mount for Zenit camera, uh, which is important because this has to be for a single lens reflex, which has a greater distance between the thread mount in the film plane. So there are many M39 mounts, but they're for rangefinder cameras and they would not apply or fit to this uh, crystal camera. So the M39 will fit right back on there. And then move along to the top. We see a flash connection port for an electronic flash. And that syncs at 1 30th of a second. And here we see engraved in Cyrillic is crystal or crystal, crystal. Nice on the, let's check out the hammer tone finish and the rib to the top. Okay, and we'll move along to the back. Moving to the top of the camera is the rewind knob. And on top of that, it has a film type indicator or reminder, and that's written in GOST, G-O-S-T, which is the Soviet standard for film speeds, like our ASA or ISO. Swinging around the back on the top left, is the serial number, which is engraved. And above the serial number is the KMZ logo. The first two digits of the serial number usually indicate the production year. In this case, it would be 1962. Going across the top, past the pentaprism here, we come to the shutter speed dial. Now, some sources say you can change the shutter speed without charging or advancing the film. And I would not recommend that. I would always make sure the film is advanced and the shutter is charged before making any changes in the shutter speed dial. In this case, it's maybe hard to see, but it's a tiny little dot right there. So we're at a 60th of a second. And to change the speed, you would lift the ring and go from 60th of a second to a 30th of a second and it sna snaps right down into position there. So now it's at a 30th, okay, and then charge the shutter to make any further changes. Around the shutter speed ring is the sink for the electronic flash or at the very top, bulb. So synchronize the shutter with the bulb or electronic flash. We'll just keep it ele at electronic. Next button over, which looks like a uh, shutter button, is actually the button to release the film so that it can be rewound. That's a film release button. Moving to the right is the lever to advance the film. This is quite an improvement from earlier Zenit models. Prior to this, you would have to use the round knob to advance the film. Lever makes it much easier. And within that circle there are the numbers indicating the number of exposures made on the film. You would set it to zero at the beginning of the roll when you load the film into the camera. And I just set the zero to that little black dot there. A little, if you can pick up a little black dot so it's at zero right now. The shutter button is also threaded for use with a cable release. Now let's take a look inside the camera. Moving to the rear of the camera, it is improved 
with a new hinged back. Previous cameras would load the film by removing the bottom plate. Uh, this innovation made the, of the hinged back made it much less cumbersome. And this would become the standard for future models. The film winding spool stays in place and is not removable. And opening it back shows the horizontal traveling cloth focal plane shutter. This is the 3 8 tripod socket, which currently has a quarter inch adapter in it. It has indented f-stops, click stops, and closest focus to 0.7 meters. And it's difficult to see that because of the angle that the distance scale is engraved at. But you can see here, engraved on the rim, in 1958, in Brussels World Exhibition, it won the highest award of the Grand Prix. But this lens has an interesting feature where you can pre-select your f-stop, let's say f11, and then dial this ring to the left, which will allow for viewing and focusing at the wide open aperture. And then right before you make your exposure, spin this dial to the right, which will take it to your pre-selected f-stop, and you can take your shot. I believe the viewfinder is not showing us as much as what's on the actual film negative. So I'm going to do a little test here. I'm using these columns as reference points within the viewfinder and see how that compares to the actual exposed film. I'm going to set the self timer for this photograph. So, let's take a look. This is what we actually see through the viewfinder. Notice the columns of the train tracks are close to the edge of the frame. Then let's place my black and white selfie photo under this viewfinder image. It shows that there is a significant cropping within the viewfinder. That is something to consider when shooting with any lens on this camera. 
I go through a checklist before taking each exposure. I always start with the film advance because you want to advance the film before making any changes in the shutter speed. I'm shooting at a 30th of a second today because I want to use the fill in flash. Then I'll check the aperture, the f-stop. I'm shooting at f11 and I'm pre-focusing. I have a little red dot here with a grease pencil indicating the 10 foot mark. I always have to remember after pre-focusing to set the f-stop aperture close all the way and I have a little arrow indicating to stop down. Then I'm all set to shoot. And in this silver version with the M39 mount, it's manufactured by Zoom, that's Z-O-M-Z, -Z, or the Zagorsk Optical and Mechanical Plant. And the focusing ring turns a full 270 degrees and is quite smooth. The build quality and construction is actually quite sturdy. And the optics are surprisingly sharp for such a vintage lens. Although the front element appears to be coated, it does have a low contrast and is prone to flare. До свидания.